Hi, hello and welcome to the Heal with Helen podcast and also what is the final episode of this particular podcast and I'm just going to talk a little bit about my decision and invite you over to my new one. And I started this podcast almost a year ago because I was diagnosed with ADHD in February 2022. I'm forgetting what year it is there. And I wanted to sort of share some of the things that I'd learned. But as with anything and life in general, we never know what's going to happen, what's around the corner. And I'd just like to add in a little disclaimer here that anything I share is based on my own lived personal experience and things that I've read, books and from experts, especially like trauma experts and therapists, which has related to my own experience. And also as my ex- experience as a long term meditator and Buddhist practitioner exploring my mind and the nature of reality. And of course, we now know that a lot of this is backed up by science with quantum physics. And we know that the mind is not a fixed thing. Once we become adults, that we can change even the physical structure of the brain at any age. And that is one of the big reasons why I'm moving away from this ADHD sphere, if you like. Now, I'm not saying the symptoms aren't real. They are very real. But what has occurred to me over the last, well, three years nearly since I first had a had a breakdown um, in June, I think it was May, June 2021. And it was like all the things that have happened to me over the years, been building up, building up, building up. And then boom, it's like taking the lid off the pressure cooker. And it was like, oh, okay, I need to take a step back, which is very difficult in this country because of the way our well, it it it's the structure of, of our society. Now I'm very fortunate that I'm lucky in the fact that my parents were able to help me out financially when I was signed off work by my doctor. But of course, you have to um, prove, in inverted commas, that you're not fit for work. And of course, if you look okay, if you're intelligent and articulate, they don't believe you. And of course, when there's pressure on you, when you're trying to say, I just need a bit of space, a breathing space, that makes things worse. And I've talked about that in previous episodes of deconstructing ADHD. So I'm not going to go into any more detail about that. But now here I am. Two years since my my diagnosis, I was 58 when I was diagnosed. So obviously, I'm 60 now. Hell, I used to be a maths teacher. And it's also, it's like a turning point in my life. I know that I, unless I break the world record almost, I think the longest record person who's lived that can be recorded is 122 years. Uh, You know, I'm 99.9% certain I'm more than halfway through this current lifetime. And of course, we don't know any time when that is gonna end. And of course, a lot of people and a lot of us, we live as if we think we're gonna live forever and we're not gonna die. And that's not being morbid, it's about being reality and making sure we make the most of the time that we have. And I've talked about this previously, that got me through my darkest days, was being very present. A meditation practice helps there to just notice what's happening now without projecting and catastrophizing and worrying. And at the end of last year, I decided, this was quite a difficult decision to make, that I wanted to walk, walk away from the coaching industry. And I 
because I did my qualification nearly 10 years ago now and a lot happened since then my husband died and I was never really able to fully get into it and part of me has been think you know there's part of me that thinks oh I should try harder um because I've spent all this money I got into got into debt and spent all my savings on then courses and programs for marketing getting clients and all that that kind of stuff and ended up in a situation which also was a big contributory factor in my breakdown in 2021 it's like suddenly oh god all my money's all gone there's no nest egg for my retirement other than a very small pension so that's kind of where what led to also deciding to end this podcast because I realized that when we are given a diagnosis and it's not just ADHD, it's a general um, pattern in our Western medical system. And this is not criticizing doctors or nurses because everybody's doing their best. I believe that 100%. But the problem is the way it's set up and I experienced it this in the past. It took me like 40 years to get diagnosed with celiac disease, for example, because they were looking at the symptoms and not what was causing them. And this is actually, you know, something that does make me feel very sad when I see there's more and more people going for these diagnoses now with mental health issues and stuff. And then it's like, when I look back now to my diagnosis, it just feels like I was fobbed off. It was like, um, well, here you go then. Fine. What, you've managed for 58 years, so you'll be OK. Um, I did do a little bit, bit of CBT, but being a coach, they didn't teach me anything I didn't know already. But I didn't really understand much about trauma then. And quite a lot of trauma experts don't recommend CBT and talk therapies because it's not it can actually reinforce those uh, brain circuits that have been hardwired by the trauma because you're trying to deal with it cognitively instead of in the body or somatically and because that's something that i've been doing a lot with my own meditation practice like when i've been going through a difficult emotional times this thing with the sensations of the body I learned from a really good meditation teacher and unhooking from those emotions and found that really helpful. But there were still times when I think, well, why am I still getting hijacked? Why am I still getting overwhelmed and not and self-sabotaging, procrastinating and and what they call like executive functioning difficulties? Now I'm not going to go into the structure of the brain. There are plenty of books out there that explain how it works. And of course I I realized, okay, I can do this. And I knew this on one level anyway, because I've read Joe Dispenza's books and things. So I decided then, okay, I'm not going to label myself, identify myself as ADHD anymore. The symptoms, yeah, as I say, were real, but I don't want to be like fixed in that with that identity. And I suppose it's like when you when you're growing, you outgrow certain things and it was very helpful. I'm not saying that the diagnosis wasn't helpful because it was helpful because it got me support and I, I learned lots of things that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. But then it's like I feel like, OK, now I've outgrown that. I'm ready for my for my next level. And I've noticed that with the kind of people that I've coached, I've always it, 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 it's like that thing, isn't it, when you end up in unsuitable relationships because you see the person's potential and not their actual reality. And that was very much how I was operating as a coach. I was, I mean, and that's good. That's not a bad thing. Of course, we have to see people's potential, but of course, they have to see it too. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, well, why don't these people want to do this work on themselves and heal their trauma and, 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 and and start you know connecting with their higher selves and living you know an authentic true life because that's challenging and it's not what we thought at school it's going to be uncomfortable 
And so I think the last few couple of years, two, three years, when I've been going through these very difficult, very dark times, you know, when I thought about at, um, that I, I couldn't see a way forward. I really couldn't. That was like, and then so every so often, I then have to have these, um, oh, what you call it, like assessment things to see, are you capable for work? Because I was still signed off not completely but that i'm i'm limited in the amount of work i can do and of course i'm not young anymore i don't have the amount of same amount of energy that i had 20, 30 years ago as well as all the challenges i've been having with my mental health and so you know it's taken a lot of radical self-care and very strong boundaries when you're talking to these Sort of officials that just want to their boxes and and actually say no and and it, it's it's not easy it's not easy at all and as i say i know that i am fortunate that my parents were able to help me and i knew that if the worst came to the worst and i couldn't afford to pay my rent i can always go back and live with them but but there, but there we go and um but but of course there comes a point where i suppose you know, I got to that point where no, right, enough is enough. I had this call on Monday and it was nine o'clock in the morning. So I wasn't totally with it at that time in the morning. It usually takes, and I haven't been sleeping very well. And oh, I just, it took me a time to get, well, it takes me a while to get going. It's like now I'm recording this at half past three in the afternoon because it's like I like to ease myself into the day and do my meditation practice, do my, uh, eat something inspiring. And so, but because we are naturally wired towards seeking out threats and fears so it's a daily practice not to get sucked into that and it's and i had been getting into that kind of negative feedback loop downward spiral over the last couple of weeks because i'd made this decision i didn't want to do coaching anymore i know where i where i'm at i'm quite clear now um that obviously meditation is very important to me so i keep teaching that and also do more writing and i've done a travel writing workshop and want to grow my travel blog and but then that sort of evolved because on saturday the 9th of march so it's a few days before recording this was the 20 year anniversary of receiving my degree absolute as well and so, like I said, I've been through a lot in my life, and I'm thinking, right, this is, I want to start rebuilding now. I've lost, I lost all my money. I had to sell my house because I had another business, I had to pay off some debts, and I just couldn't. Well, I could afford the mortgage, but the problem was, if something had gone wrong, there was no spare money because it was all tied up in the house. My ex-husband died. I took some time off work and pretty much went through my savings, spent the last of my savings on some person who said they would help me get coaching clients. And of course, I'm not dissing this person because I have a lot of respect for them because they've been through a lot and I like, and and they have actually helped me a lot, um, taught me a lot. But at, at the same time, it was where I was. I wasn't in the right place. There was still, it's like, you can't rush the healing journey. It's, 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 it's so difficult when we want instant gratification, instant results and live in a society that puts that pressure on us. So um, I decided on Monday, I've had this call and I thought, right, this is it now. Um, this is where I start rebuilding my life. I've got less than seven years now until I reach retirement age, although I don't see myself probably retiring then. But and I have a couple of small pensions from when I was teaching. And, um, but not really anything substantial. So it's like, right, it's up to me then to rebuild, to rebuild this. And knowing that my past doesn't define me. And also I want to use it to inspire other people who may have been through some of the things that I've been through in my life. As I say, the mental health challenges, um, being in an abusive marriage then 
the difficulties after the divorce, being a single parent with three young sons, and also trying to support them. And when the ex-husband is withholding maintenance payments and things like that, and then because he dies without making a will so when he still owed me a lot of money and when i got divorced nobody offered me any support i went to the doctors i went to sort of solicitor obviously we even went to relate for some counseling and nobody said oh right oh here's a, a women's aid or some you know women's charity who can help you give you advice none of that so i was so eventually, of course, it all gets too much. And that's sort of led to the breakdown and some burnout. And it's also taught me to have more compassion for myself as well. And it's like, yes, Helen, you have been through a lot. And sometimes it get, it can get a bit much. Like yesterday when Substack was playing up, <laughs> I just wanted to burst into tears. <laughs> God, but anyway, it works fine now. But but you you get the, get the point that, that there's all these things but at the same time I have done a huge amount of healing work and inner work and had to take well we have to take responsibility for our own healing anyway but very much more so when we don't get it from from our health service and I didn't have the funds to go and pay for like expensive therapy which I would have loved but it just wasn't an option for me I did have some hypnotherapy last year which wasn't so pricey and that that did help gave me some tools to help again it's like rewiring your the traumatized parts of your brain and that helped me as well so but you know I've had to do it myself and and there are days when you know to be honest I just don't feel like it <laughs> but now it's like finding that that bigger reason why I want to do this so I'm going I set up the new name a few weeks ago go with Helen um, and that sort of evolved into like me sharing my journey of rebuilding my life and because I want to inspire other women especially of course, it could be men as well, but because I'm a woman <laughs> and mostly, you know, I, I, if other women have been through what I've been through and I haven't shared all of it by a long talk. Um, but the whole point is, it, it's like Byron Katie says, it's not personal, you know, it's when we want things to be different that causes suffering and really seeing how we do cause our own suffering. And it's like the more we want things to be different and we complain and blame, we only create more suffering for ourselves. So I hope you will come and join me over on my new um, platform, my new podcast where we'll sh um, and blog, um, which I will share the link below. I'll still be on YouTube. Go with Helen is on all because that's a it was a, luckily available on it everywhere. And the domain name and on, and on all the all the platforms so that's my handle go with helen and i think even if you google it now you'll find you'll find some of those things like youtube and substack and stuff so i do invite you to come and join me there and to continue with me on my journey and i hope to inspire inspire you um to take responsibility for your your life your happiness because you know that was it Dalai Lama or somebody said it didn't they that happiness is an inside job we can create our own happiness and that is so true um it's not always easy I'm not saying it's ever easy but the important thing is is not giving up and I'm still here I'm still alive and so as long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep growing and keep, you know, stepping up into becoming a better version of myself. And this is for me, it's the next level. It's like, okay, we've we've been through this stage, we've been through that, right? We're now moving on, leaving that behind, 
not getting attached to anything like diagnoses, labels or whatever, um, doing what we need to do to heal and then going on to the next level of our growth and development. So thank you so much for being part of this podcast. And I do hope you'll come over and join me on the new one. So in the meantime, I wish you well. Take care and lots of love. Bye.